Hi, I'm Richie Zellin, and in this video, I want to share with you a concept I like to call minimalist comping. You see, when playing with other musicians, sometimes we have to share our comping duties with a keyboard player, and resorting to our usual four-part chord voicings might just clutter the harmony. Yet in other instances, we might be the only instrument comping, but the music might call for a very open and rhythmically light approach. These are two scenarios where less is more and minimalist comping happens to be the perfect solution. And I'm ready to tell you all about it now. Welcome back to the Jazz Guitar Channel. And if this is your first time and you want to learn everything you can about the art of playing jazz guitar, please consider subscribing and be sure to click the bell icon. And this is crucial if you don't want to miss any future videos because the YouTube algorithm these days will only show new videos to those subscribers who request it by doing so. In my opening uh, remarks, I briefly described two scenarios where minimalist comping comes in handy. I'm going to demonstrate both, but I want to start with those instances when the guitar is the only instrument comping. That is, there's no keyboard, and you want to create an open and rhythmically light background for the soloist. This yields a very fresh sound and really lets the music breathe. It creates a sort of a chamber ensemble and can result in some interesting counterpoint between the guitar and the soloist. And we achieve this for the most part by playing what we call dyads or two note chords. Now, as far as the rhythms go, we want to leave most of the swing drive and syncopation to the bass and drummer. And as a result, we mainly play half notes and whole notes. Of course, this doesn't mean that we can't occasionally revert to fuller chords and syncopation for more of a traditional swing feel. But in the upcoming demonstration, I'm sticking to minimalist comping. So, for those of you who complain that I don't play enough in my videos, next you're in for a double treat. You get to watch me play with myself. No pun intended. Are you still with me? <laughs> no, really. You're about to see a split screen where I solo on the top half while the other me is comping in the bottom half. And this is played at a medium swing tempo over the changes to It Can Happen to You. And stick around because after this, I will break it down for you and show you some of the things that I'm doing. Here goes. <laughs> Thank you. 
really playing a dyad uh, that has a third or a seventh and one of the upper extensions. So in the piece I played, which were the uh, changes to uh, It Could Happen to You, I was doing a lot of uh, half and whole notes and occasionally some contrapuntal uh, lines using quarter notes. Uh, let's see. It's in the key of G, so I might have started. You know, here, I'm playing over the G chord. I have the seventh and the fifth. Here I have the uh, major seventh in the bottom. I have the 13th there. Now I'm going to a, an E chord and I have the, the third in the bottom and I have a flatted nine on top. Then I'm, I'm descending while holding that third down. And I'm going to a sixth here with the fifth and the uh, minor third on top. Of course, you know, there's no uh, upper extension here, no butter notes, but it creates interesting movement. So here, I have that minor third here over an A, an A minor, and the ninth on top. Here, I'm implying a diminished chord. I'm using a major seventh interval there, a root and uh, the seventh. Again, over the uh, G, the third and the ninth. So. Over the B, a sus. So it's very contrapuntal, as you can see. So you do have to know your, your, um, your harmony and you have to know uh, your, your main chords, uh, four-part chords, because all we're doing is we're omitting notes in, in four-part chords or sometimes uh, bigger chords and, and just narrowing it down to that fundamental chord tone and that butter note. Previous to this video, I posted a video entitled A Guide to Lead Sheet Chords When Comping. And in it, I discussed primarily the uh, harmonic fundamentals of comping. And you should see a link to the video about now on the top right. Uh, I recommend you watch it as it will cover various fine points not covered here. But the main reason I mention this video is because in it I reveal the unwritten rule for the guitarist who plays in an ensemble that also features a keyboard player. And that unwritten rule again is that the keyboard player outranks the guitarist in regards to supplying the overall harmony. Yeah. 
What can we do? In other words, keyboard players are the lions of the jazz jungle. Be sensitive to their musical commands or you'll be history. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that we as guitarists have to stay out of their way. We have to play around them when comping, both harmonically and rhythmically speaking. So here again, minimalist comping can be the solution, especially in more up-tempo pieces like the one I'm going to demonstrate next. I wanted to show you how I comp with a real pianist, but after trying to use the real tracks in Band in a Box, I found that they were a little too mechanical and predictable. So what I did is I dug up some old Jamie Abersold backing tracks that features a real rhythm section and I chose an upper tempo version of a track with the changes to what is this thing called love. And here the pianist is really busy and hitting all sorts of full chord voicings on the upbeats. So if you play full chord voicings on guitar, you are definitely going to get in his way and clutter things up. And rhythmically speaking, if you accent using percussive syncopation, it will only sound like a game of sonic ping pong and then you'll be in everybody's way. So what we need to do is listen, 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 and think contrapuntally. If the piano is full, busy, and syncopated, you should play sustained, wide intervals on the beat for the most part. And remember that the word comping also implies to complement. And that is exactly what happens when we interact contrapuntally in jazz not only with the soloist, but with the other members of the rhythm section. So now you get to watch and hear how I tame the beast using minimalist comping. And by the way, I tried tuning to that old Abersold re recording using a, a digital tuner. And even though my guitar is perfectly in tune here, there are certain chords the piano hits where the intonation gets kind of weird. So sorry about that. I mainly want you to get a feel for the concept. Here goes. <laughs> So that's the general idea. If you want to practice comping with a pianist, be sure to use backing tracks played by live musicians before going out and trying it on a gig. Or you might not survive it. These beasts can be ruthless. Well, that covers it. I'd love to hear your comments and any questions you may have. And if you like this lesson, be sure to give me a thumbs up. On the other hand, if you did like it, I still welcome and appreciate your comments and suggestions as long as they are of a constructive nature. Finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and be sure to click on the bell notification icon so you won't miss anything. So have fun and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.